Shalom everybody, we are studying today from the very end. We're trying today something new, it's called uh, Zoom and we have Facebook. Everybody from his own comfort of his own home. Uh, Medina, Shalom. How are you? I want to thank of course the Medina for hosting this show regularly. I can do it. Shalom, I can do it, you see. It's, 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 it's not uh, complicated. Do you see each other by the way? Yeah. Very good, cool. wonderful, wonderful. I hope that more will join. Uh, in any event, you can send always uh, some tips on the group to, uh, uh, to show people how to connect. Bezat Hashem, this Shi'ul, this Torah class, the first one, class number one, is dedicated for speedy recovery for all those who uh, needs that. And we want to wish everyone that will be safe from any plague, especially from the corona all the Jewish around the world and all the people that support Israel will be, Bezat Hashem, safe and healthy. We have a very interesting class today, both classes. We will, um, yes, we will uh, connect. I see more people participating, so I guess, okay. Uh, we'll uh, do now um, a brief uh, introduction about the plate, the Seder plate. I know that last time I talked for, um, I think it was uh, six minutes and then it got disconnected. If something like that, God forbid, happens, please let me know. Uh, the Seder plate, I, I want you to know that there is order in the Seder plate. And this is according to the Kabbalah. Before beginning the Seder, we arrange the various foods that we are commanded to eat on this night on the plate um, that is placed prominently on the table throughout the Seder. So according to the Arizal, it's placed like that at the very top, on the sides, in the middle, on the side, and at the very bottom. On the very top, you will have the three matzot. Exactly, very good. Like uh, Yafa is showing right now, the three matzot. Um, we have on the right side, you right hand, your right hand. On your right side, you have the zeroa, it's a shake bone. And the other side is the beitza. In the middle is the maror. Maror. Uh, under the zeroa, under the maror, on the right hand side is going to be the haroset. The celery carpas on the left hand side at the very bottom in the middle is the lettuce. Uh, I can show you it right now. It looks something like this. I don't know why it's showing it upside down, but I think on Zoom, no, it's also on Zoom. Even on Zoom, do you see the letters? You'll be able to read it or it's upside down like? Like it's a mirror, right? Ah, uh, you can see it good? Yes. All right. All right, I, I, on my screen I see it uh, like it's upside down, like it's a mirror. Okay, good. Yeah. So remember, this is the order. There is a reason why it's set up like that. I don't really want to go through what's the reason. It's according to the sefirot in the Kabbalah. The very top is uh, Chokhmah, the Bina, the Dat. Right hand is Chesed, the other one is Gevura, Tiferet. Then Yeshlanu um, and Nesah and the Hod, the Netzach, I'm sorry, the Netzach, the Hod, and the Yesod at the very bottom. Um, you have to remember, and this is vital, this is something that many do mistakes. What's the mistake? The mistake is that people drink or eat certain food during the meal without leaning on the left side. And if you don't do that on certain times, that was Hashem will discuss, you didn't fulfill the mitzvah. Sometimes it even says in the Haggadah, don't lean on your left side. You have to recline. Remember that last time we talked about um, um, that we eat, some, some communities has the custom to eat meat, and some has not during this night. Yemenite eating meat during the night to bring out um, roast meat. Uh, it was customary, I remember as a child, after finishing doing the matzot, that by the way, we'll do matzot. This year, it's first time in Dallas that we're baking matzot. And our group, Marpe Vachesed, 
took this initiative. Myself and Rabbi uh, Cohen and Bezal Hashem Nati Tzadon will, uh, will uh, join hopefully tomorrow after the Ta'anit or uh, Thursday. We'll see. All those who support Marpev and Chesed, we're giving them out. You can give as much as you want. We're not selling them. It's going to be a Yemenite flexible matzot. The original, like this, the times of uh, our forefathers, they did matzot. It was not like a cardboard. It was a real lafa. It was a real lafa. Not as good as lafa, but it's still good. You can do korech and everything. You can fold the food around it. So, we mentioned that it's vital to recline. To eat the matzah within certain time. Best is four minutes, no longer than seven minutes. So with the soft matzah, which you take this that much, it's very easy. It's very easy. It's, it's fast. It's no problem. With the uh, hard matzah, it's going to take some uh, more uh, struggling. But it's up to you what you want to do. A little bit, we're going to touch from each halakha, from each subject, few halakhot. Dine kiddush, first one, it's siman 472, taf ein bed, kiddush, the four cups, and maybe you see me, uh, maybe you see me now uh, on the right side, sometimes it's twisted, but I mean to recline on the left side. It's a great mitzvah, especially for the woman on the, on, on the house, to prepare the, the, the seder table in advance. I want you to know, when you make efforts to prepare such a table, your mitzvah in the eyes of Hashem is greater. You don't do the last minute. Because we, come, uh, the, 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 we are on summer time. And summer clock, meaning that we're going to start around. I don't, I don't know yet. We will, Bez Hashem, send the schedule. Around 8:50, 8:45-ish, Kiddush. You don't start then to do the preparation, the preparing. What you need to do is to come, say Chag Sameach, Yom Tov Sameach, and you start immediately with the Kiddush. It's not competition who finished last. It depends on what you do. The, grace, the, the mitzvah is to share the story of uh, Exodus with our children, with the kids, with each other, or with yourself. Now, this year, Taf Shin Pei, 2020. It's the first time, I think, in the Jewish history that people won't go to shul. They don't go to shul. They're going to have very limited amount of people sitting around the table. It's going to be mainly your mishpacha, mainly the people on, in the household. And it's going to be special this year. Everything that happens in this world, it's for a reason. There is a reason why and this is something we'll discuss, Bezrat Hashem, in our second class. Next class. Why we are sitting in quarantine. Why we're afraid to go out. Why we have to wear gloves. Why we have to put this, what do you call this? Um, around the mouth, whatever. A mask, okay. Why we have to carry a mask even we are, Purim is long ago. Purim is behind us. <laughs> Why we need masks? What is going on? Bezal Hashem answer in the next class. So, one should have a set of tables set before the evening begins so that when one returns home from the synagogue, one can recite the Kiddush immediately. Listen to this. It's immediate. It has to be immediate. Many years ago, I did one time set a night with a family, very nice family. They started so late. I'm telling you, I was so nervous. We came from shul. We went to the living room. And they're schmoozing and talking and talking. And I'm looking at them. And I'm looking to the 
set a table and they see that the woman is bringing more plates and oh my goodness what did you do what did you do all day but Baruch Hashem we finish around 3 o'clock a.m. <laughs> when you're supposed to finish around 12 -ish. the idea is that, let's put it that way is the quantity important or the quality we know especially in this case that the quality is important it's better to say less but with kavana we supposed to be with joy and one ask himself how can I be with joy with all the situation out there people afraid to go out and when they already go out they fight over toilet paper they're fighting over toilet paper. You go, you're limited to one. It's another thing I don't get what the corona has to do with toilet paper. I have no idea what's going on here. In any event, next halacha. You must do the kiddush after dusk, not before. So don't do it too early. It's highly recommended to make sure the kids will participate and they will sleep, get, some, get a siesta during the day, maybe even yourself, so you can be fresh. The problem is that we used to see when we were kids, the women work so hard. And also the men work very hard with burning the chametz, cleaning up and setting up. By the time we start the kiddush, you see their heads falling and they fell asleep and have to wake them up and they just want you to finish to get over with no that's not the right thing to do prepare as much as you can now when we have time when everybody works from home you have extra time to do seder believe me guys this is we're living in messianic days you can see it in your own eyes this is the messianic days it says benisan nigalu in the times of Nisan, the month of Nisan, they were redeemed. And in Nisan, they will be redeemed in the Messianic days. Mashiach comes in Nisan. Tomorrow, it's a half day fast. Start 6... I think 6.10, we advertise. And ends by 1.33. We're going to go after that, 1.33, you have some time to drink something. Mincha starts at 2 o'clock. At 2 o'clock, we're going to do Zoom Mincha, special prayer. Everybody can participate. Of course, we're not going to say Kaddish. At the end of the tefillah and the slichot that we'll have, we will do shofar blowing. Tomorrow, 5 o'clock, Israel time. All the Jews around the world will say to Hilim to be saved. We know that our power is in our mouth. And Koham Shel Israel, the power of Israel, Ela Befem, in their mouth. Meaning, not they can bite people, the prayer, the power of speech, the power of Tefilot. One came to Rabbi Kenevsky, Rabbi Chaim, and asked him, one of his grandchildren, just a few days ago. Rabbi, Abba, Saba, Zaidi, what we can do? What we can do to be saved from the corona? Rabbi Chaim is the Gdolador, is the rabbi. Said to him, Tefilot, prayers. His grandfather, grand, grandchildren asked him, grandson, Saba, Tefilah, that's it? He told them, Tefillah. There's nothing greater, stronger, more powerful than Tefillah. Everyone now in quarantine, you're quarantined with Hashem. One minute Tefillah, five minute Tefillah, one hour, as much as you can. You want to be saved? You need to make efforts. Now, next. Who is obligated to have the four cups? Now, there's many questions out there. Should I have one big cup, filling it all the way? Let's say this is my cup. 
all the way up to here, and I'll drink one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. Or to fill it up, just have one cup and use it all the time. I'll pour to myself a new cup all uh, every time. Answer. Better is to use a fresh cup each time. Meaning, you don't pour to yourself. Someone will pour for you, and you wash it each time. We use a disposable one that is around three ounces, because a revi, the minimum amount is a little bit less than three ounces. You drink the shot, and you, to you, you, you toss it. Get rid of it. Get a new one. You can buy one dollar. I don't know, 30 of them, 50 of them. It's very cheap. If you want to use the big cup, you can, but after you finish to drink the first one, let's say you have lines, you know where to, what's the minimum, you have to add a little bit fresh wine and you clear. Otherwise, it's all not suitable for drinking the rest of the, the cups. So in order to make it kosher, you drink from the big cup, and then what's left for three cups, you add a little bit wine, you add a little bit wine, and you're good. You make it new, okay? You have to lean on your left side, your recline, while drinking the wine. Men and women are equally obligated to drink from the wine. What should I use? Red or white wine? Red is better. Red is preferable. The reason is, it reminds us um, the blood that the Egyptians shed from the Jewish people, from the Israelite. In case that the white wine is better quality, then you may use, if you want to mix the two, you can mix. Some people cannot drink wine because you come an empty stomach. It's too hard, it makes you dizzy. My recommendation, it's, it's, it's what I do. We use a grape, grape juice wine, a grape juice, and I'm adding to it a little bit of wine, especially for the first cup. Otherwise, I'll be dizzy, I have bad experience with that. What? You saying you hear some uh, kids in the background? By the way, everybody, you can put yourself in mute so we won't hear the kids in the background. I'm sitting in the room, it's quiet here. There's nobody here. So if you want to put yourself in mute, if you have a question, you can always unmute and ask a question. Okay. Now, um, our sages institute a rule that we must recline to one side when eating matzah for the mitzvah of matzah. Korech en afikoman, and when drinking each of the four cups of wine. So we already have six times we have to recline for each cup. For the Hamotzi Lechem, when we say the Kiddush, Hamotzi Lechem, that after. And when we do the Korech, Korech, and when we fold the Matzah over the lettuce. You'll be able to do that if you'll have a soft Matzah. Otherwise, you're just going to have one, one layer at the top, one layer at the bottom. You won't be able to do Korech. Some softening the Matzah <coughs> to do that, not a good idea, not recommended. Okay, <clears throat> when you recline, you don't recline forward, you don't recline backward, even if you feel more comfortable, you recline on your left side. What's the reason? Especially those days, they used to sit down on a very low badge, and they sit like kings. Each and every one of us has to feel like he is a king. This is why we have a mitzvah in this night when... I mean, not to break a bone. Some don't eat the roast meat and some does. What's the reason? You remember we discussed that? Why we don't break a bone? 
we mentioned that it's also said in the Sefer Achinuch that a man one is influenced by his own actions who break bones and eat the eat what's inside it's animalistic act it's like a dog like an animal you are a king you have to be very polite show manners you eat nicely you recline on your left side think like a king act like a king and then and this this is why we don't break any bone you can do that the whole year. Not on Passover. As it says, You should not break any bone that night. Okay. Going forward. Any questions? Kadesh. The mitzvah is red wine. We already said that. If you can't drink wine, grab juice. Even if you're sick, even if you're diabetic, you have to force yourself to drink, prepare yourself with medications so you can go through this. For You don't have to drink a big cup, very small, or at least taste from it. If it's really dangerous for you, then you're exempt. One wants to take advantage and says, I want to drink medication while I'm drinking the four cups. I have heartburn, ha heartburn, and I want to, while I do the four cups, one of the cups, I'll, I'll swallow it with the wine. You're not allowed to do that. It's specific for the sake of the mitzvah. It's not a carrier for medication. Kapesh? If someone cannot stand drinking wine, or even if drinking wine causes him physical harm, he nevertheless must force himself to drink the four cups at the Seder. We said only on certain special cases he will be exempt. Remember, according to the Kabbalah, it's highly recommended that before filling the cup with wine for Kiddush, the cup must rinse thoroughly, inside and out. If it is already clean, however, this is technically not necessary, but it's good to do, uh, to do so nevertheless for Kabbalistic reasons. Okay? Just so you know, wine represents judgment and water represent chesed kindness what we do brings influence to our life okay remember we said the wine is a traitor why is a traitor you set him down to your stomach, but he goes up to your head. That's the nature of alcohol. Okay. According to the Kabbalah, for Kabbalistic reasons, we add three drops of water, one at a time, to the cup of wine before reciting Kiddush. If one is using grape juice or raisin wine with a little or no alcoholic content, there is no technically a need to add any water to it. It's already with water. Even so, it is good to add the three drops of water for Kabbalistic reasons. Please remember to pour to the one <clears throat> that's it by you. We're going to have less problem this year, but it's not appropriate that a man will pour to a woman guest, not a family member. A brother can do to his sister, a son to his mom, mom to his there's no problem. But a man should pour to a man and woman to a woman. And this is right and this is true for the whole year. If you want to prepare someone a cup of coffee, you do it in advance. You know when I come to the Medina's house for Torah classes, the cup of coffee is already there. 
Yafa is very strict about this halacha. So Baruch Hashem, that's the, that's the way you should do all the time. Even when you have guests, you don't pour before them any kind of drink. It's not appropriate. A woman also, it's not appropriate for her to serve food to other men. This is why you see religious people, they don't send, orthodox people, they don't send their children to be waitress. It's not appropriate. Other problems can come out from this um, experience. Very bad, very bad. Okay. <clears throat> Something we have to do the whole year, and especially on Passover. There's a lot of people, people excited, people coming from out of town, kids, but everyone in the household must listen carefully to Kiddush as it's being recited. The person reciting it must have in mind that he is reciting on behalf of those who are listening to him. And the people listening must have in mind to fulfill their own obligation of Kiddush through listening to it. If this guy is stuttering, mumbling, you don't understand what he's saying. You don't do Kiddush by yourself out loud. It's going to be very offensive. It's going to be, what it says, we have removed the 40 minute limit on the next... Oh, I don't know why I loved it. Okay. Do you still see me? Yeah. Still, okay, Baruch Hashem. Okay, so what do you do? What's the trick? And this is true even on Shabbat time. You guessed. You don't understand what the guy is saying. Many people, they don't know how to pronounce the Kiddush correctly. You should, we, we've learned a few times. Baruch atah monai Elohim melech ha'olam People say Brook Tam Nai Brook. What's it Brook? Loenu. Loenu. What's the Loenu? It should say Elohenu. You hear the difference between Elohenu to Loenu? You never said Bracha in your life when you said that. So what do you do? You do it quietly for yourself. You hold a cup. If you don't have, you ask the balabai, the head of the household, can I have some wine just to hold? This is my custom. No one will argue with you. And you say quietly with him, this is how you cover yourself for the Kiddush. Don't count on anybody. Don't rely on anybody, okay? <clears throat> Sometimes there are people that do the Kiddush, even if they know how to pronounce the word correctly, they don't have you in mind to fulfill. They didn't think about it. What's, what's, what I use? I use a trick. Every Shabbat, every time before I do Kiddush, I tell the people out loud that I'm going to have in mind, and they should have in mind. This is why everybody on the same page. You should please train yourself to do that every time you do Kiddush. You have to do the Kiddush standing. And you do Sheikh Yanu. There is no say, nobody should say Baruch Hu, Baruch Shemo. Question, the woman lighting the candles for the holidays, it's recommended to wait till the um, husband and the children coming back from shul. If it's going to happen this year or not, we hope yes. If not, you're home already. It's better that before you do the Kiddush, the woman of the house will light the candle so everybody would hear and everyone will earn another bracha that responded with Amen. If you are already at home, the woman of the house should not wait till Kiddush. She can do it right away. But if they went to shul, it's right, it's true for every holiday, not on Shabbat, never on Shabbat, only on Yom Tov. You take a flame, a fire from an existing fire, and you light the candles with that. Sing the beracha, no shechianu, just to ladlik ner shel yom tov, and you leave the match there using a match. Don't distinct, don't uh, uh, extinguish it. Let it go by itself. So, I repeat that. Everybody this year at home. Go 
close to your wife to hear the bracha over the candles and go do your prayers after. If you're in the shul, it's better that she'll wait. They come back from shul, they hear her sing the bracha, and then light the candles, and then she can do all what she requests. Teshuvah for the children, livelihood, health, all these kind of things. Shechayanu would be recited on the Kiddush Seder night only, not on the candles, when we light the candles. Questions if you have? Guys, I'll appreciate if you put yourself in mute, because I hear a lot of uh, noises in the background. Thank you. Only in case you have questions, you can unmute and ask the question. I'm going to do the So now we did Kadesh with the Kiddush, with the wine. We explained everything. If you have any questions, please let me know. Now we're going to do Urchat. By the way, you, still, you can still connect to Zoom. If you hear me, I see some people connecting to us with us with uh, Facebook. Go ahead and use Zoom. No problem. Urchat is different when we do Urchat, washing hands, for Passover because it's very confusing every time before we eat bread we wash our hand we say Al lentilat yadayim. We sit down we take the bread dip it in the uh, uh, salt and we eat this time is different the first time we wash we wash we dry our hands and we, we don't, we're not saying any beracha some of the Haggadon has explanation why I don't want to go through it right now there's a reason why. This hand washing is not for the bread. It's because we're dipping a vegetable in salty water. Why we have to wash? It's not for now to explain. So, immediately after Kiddush, we eat a piece of karpas. Karpas can be a piece of a celery, the branch. Dipped in salt water. Why are we using salt water? Salt water corresponded, represent the tears of the Israelites when they cried day and night, when the Egyptians made them work as extra slaves, hardship, they were killing them. It was a holocaust, no less than that. Before eating it, the karpas, washing. Everyone must wash hands in the same manner as one washes in order to eat bread. Whenever we eat wet food, we must first wash hands. And this is no exception. Okay, really quick. I'm not going to go deeply to the halacha. I want to do as much as I can. Please, when you wash hands... Don't leave the room you wash the hands. Don't go outside of the house. Don't go to another room. Because you have to have an eye contact from the place you're washing hands or while you're washing to the table. If you go to another room, you have to rewash now. So be careful about these things. Some people has a uh, sink outside or they're sitting outside and eating inside. They have to leave some people at the table and go one by one. Don't leave the table with all, without people around it. Another tip I can give you. Never do Birkat Amazon leaving no food with no leftover. They will have no beracha. Beracha can dwell only on something. Even a 